Welcome to Control Room. My name is Douglas Ferguson, and I'm the founder of Voltage Control, and we made Control Room. Just wanted to take a few moments to welcome you in and show you the basics and tell you a little bit about why we created Control Room. Before I get started, I wanted to make a point that we love feedback. So if there's anything you think we should know, please reach out and tell us what you think. We're always making updates and we'd love to hear your feedback. So we created Control Room because we are avid facilitators. And we believe that really good meetings are at the core of great collaboration and the kinds of outcomes that companies are seeking. And so we wanted to bring really great facilitation and really effective methods and activities for facilitation to the hands of everyone, especially in these virtual settings. It can be really hard to do some of these things. There's some really great tools, but some of them, um, some of these activities are hard to run with, with um, with kind of conventional tools, whether they need randomization or they, they need to scale to like hundreds of people. So, uh, so we, we built this to basically allow us to run these methods that we love running to make meetings better. And we wanted to offer this to you. So uh, the, this tool complements your typical meeting tools. So uh, whether it's Zoom or Teams or Google Meet, et cetera, this is going to work alongside of it. So you would give your participants this link, they would open it in their browser, and they would essentially fill out these activities or play these games so that you can collect their thoughts and create some cross-pollination between ideas and help people collaborate more effectively. Um, this can even be used for virtual events because we support a welcome uh, activity, which allows you to kind of create a, um, a really nice welcome message with everything they need to know about the event ahead of time. There's also a really great feedback tool that can be really um, handy for collecting feedback um, and understanding how people um, perceived and appreciated your event. So lots of stuff, 25 activities in, in all. So this video is not going to cover all activities. In fact, I'm really just going to be focusing on the structural elements of the tool, how to use it at a high level, and then there's gonna be separate videos for each activity, and I'll show you how to find those activities. So let's just dive right in. So the app starts here in the meeting view, and the meeting view um, allows you to create meetings, and then you can, you can kind of filter between upcoming meetings and past meetings, as well as shared meetings. And shared meetings are meetings that someone has shared with you as a co-facilitator so that you can help out during the session. In the upcoming meetings view, you'll only see meetings that are in the future. You can click this link, how to use control room to get to our help page with all the videos, including this one, if you're trying to get back and find it again. I'm just gonna create a quick meeting and I'll go over meeting creation and meeting um, details in another video, but suffice it to say, you can create um, a title for your meeting, you can give it a date, and there's templates as well. Once we create a meeting, you'll see the meeting tile, and the meeting tile contains the name, the date, and any activities that you've put on this meeting, as well as any feedback that you've already gotten on this meeting. Once we're in a specific meeting, you'll notice that there's an ellipsis here. This allows you to um, delete um, clone the meeting. These are the same tools that you'd find in the meeting list we were just looking at. This is just a convenience so that if you're already on the meeting, you don't have to go back to the list and find it again. On the left hand side, you'll find facilitation related tools. On the right hand side, you see the participant related tools. There's a timer in the middle. You can edit activities to, um, to add an activity to your to your meeting, you'll notice we have 25 in all. Let's say I wanna add a 2510. This will pop up some settings for the 2510. It's letting you know that you need at least six participants. I'm gonna add this activity, and then let's add a, um, maybe we'll add a note and vote. One of my favorite activities. And you'll see that we, we defaulted the names and the prompts just to make it easier for you, to give you some kind of hints. And if you wanna just quickly add the defaults, they, they generally work, but we do recommend uh, we do recommend changing them. 
And as you can see, we can reorder them. The reason that we might want to reorder them is because um, we do have the ability to kind of um, cycle through the, the, different, um, the different activities quickly rather than having to uh, locate them in the dropdown. And what I mean by locate them in the dropdown is this is the participants dropdown. And if we toggle this, that's going to toggle what the participant sees. And you'll notice that these two dropdowns are different at the moment. I've got the participant seeing feedback while I'm looking at note and vote. And there's a little warning here that lets you know participants are not viewing this activity just so that you can, um, you've got a reminder that they don't match. And you've got a quick handy link here that you can send to participants. If I click this, the participant dropdown is going to sync to what um, I'm looking at. This can be handy because you might want to configure or update an activity based on outputs of previous activity. So if you collect that output, bring it over into the prompts or the options for the next activity, you can be doing that as they're wrapping up their conversations or their work or while they're on break and you haven't sent them to the next activity yet. So that's the, those are the basics for the facilitator view and the participant view where you can, you know, you can toggle your activities, you can set the activities for the participant, you can toggle the ones you're editing, and then you can, you can kind of cycle through them in order. So um, every activity starts with a welcome and a slides. Welcome is just a nice little WYSIWYG editor tool where you can create a welcome message to your participants. I really like to drop my Zoom link into my welcome message and I send out my control room link and then they can find the Zoom link through the welcome page. You can also put mural links in your welcome page. You can create um, read ahead. If you want them to do some homework or just think about some stuff before they show up, you can put all that on the welcome page and you can style it out with, with some nice WYSIWYG um, kind of editor tools there. Um, these are the, these are the basics. There's a few other things I wanted to point out to you that are kind of common across all the activities. Um, and let me just switch over to note and vote so that you can kind of, um, you can kind of see, see this here under this, beneath this ellipses, you can see settings, you can see delete, you can see reset. Reset's really handy if you want to do some testing. Um, especially if when we were, <laughs> when we were creating the application, and I was first learning how to use the tool, I, um, I did this a lot and I recommend that you do as well. And the way this works is that um, if you create the participant, click the participant link and then come over to a new tab, you can paste that into a tab and join as a participant. And this can be a really handy way for you to be able to see what the participant sees. So if you want to test it out and kind of get your head around how it works and kind of see their experience, you know, you can watch these videos, but actually seeing it firsthand and experiencing it is probably the best way to do it. So I really recommend doing that the first few times. So if I send this note and vote over to the participant, I can toggle over and kind of see what they're doing. And, um, of course, all of these activities have a status. So zero one participants have added notes. So I haven't added any notes, so it hasn't alerted me. But as soon as I add some notes, it's going to tell me that all participants have added notes. I can also see here who my participants are. So I can see um, Douglas is connected and no one's disconnected. Disconnected means someone joined the link, but then disappeared. So if you have multi-day events, um, or you take a break and someone doesn't return, you'll see them in the disconnected list. So it can be really helpful to kind of see what's going on there. Of course, I've got um, zero participants looking at the screen. Um, this is why Douglas is grayed out because my tab is hidden. If I pull this tab out to its own window, um, you'll notice that um, then I will show up as a viewing participant and I won't be gray anymore. So this is really handy to um, to think about uh, how to under well just to understand how the participants view works. So I'm not going to go any deeper into note and vote because we'll have a separate video on that. I just wanted to show you that you can view these participant details. You can see that Douglas has added notes. Um, no one else is in the, in there, and um, everyone's added notes. So it can be really handy to coach your participants and help them out if they're stuck or they haven't actually submitted something, so that you don't go to the next round or the next phase until everyone's complete. And so this is where I would advance to the next round, 
And then my participants would see the next phase, which is where they're going to be selecting the ideas they want to share. But again, I'll go into more into detail on how note and vote works in the note and vote video. Just wanted you to see that you are able to get a high level status of what's going on with your participants. And then you can see the details so that you can coach them and help them along. Just like there's an ellipsis for the meeting up top, there's an ellipsis for the activity that you're on. And so you can look at the settings, you can delete it. And then this reset button, I wanted to come back to you. This reset button allows you to reset. So if you did some testing and you wanted to reset so that it's a clean slate without having to recreate the meeting or clone the meeting, you can just hit reset and it will reset all that test data and it will be right back to the beginning. So if I look here as a participant, I'm right back at the first screen with no ideas entered. Not something you're going to want to do on a real live session, but can be really handy if you're testing or if, you, if you're if um, you working with participants and they get confused and they want to start over, reset can come in handy then as well. Also, the instruction screen is a really great place to uh, just read over how each activity works. And coming soon, there's going to be videos in the instructions. I've just got to record them all. So... Next time you look at the instruction screen, there'll be little videos for each activity. So that can be a really great way to understand how each activity works and to locate the videos. The last thing I'll mention is that we have a timer. You can click on the timer to set it. And then once you set it, you can start it. And once started, the timer will be running for the participant. Last, I want to show you a broadcast message. And this is the broadcast message. And you can send messages to folks via broadcast. This can be really handy if folks are out in breakout rooms in Zoom. You got a persistent message that has a timestamp on it. Unlike these like broadcasts in Zoom that disappear and no one sees and they don't have timestamps on them. So you can't even remember what you sent or when you send it. So these are the basics for Control Room. And thank you for listening. Thank you for using the app. And please do let us know if you have any questions. Um, and I hope to see you around sometime.